silly season is always a key part of the Formula One season. It gives both fans and teams a chance to fantasize about potential lineups and future results. The chaos usually begins with a big bang, with 2022 proving to be no different so far. With five seats left to be filled and plenty of interested drivers, it's certain to be a hectic summer break. However, so much has already happened that it doesn't even appear that the majority of the teams are going to enjoy the luxury of a month off. In the last two weeks alone, silly season has already seen a retirement, a shock switch, a contracted driver told he's not needed, and the threat of legal action. Oh, so just what's gone down so far in the 2022 silly season? Whilst it wasn't the start of silly season, Sebastian Vettel's retirement announcement prior to the Hungarian Grand Prix has proved to be the big bang that has caused silly season carnage. To the surprise of most, Vettel announced in Hungary that he'd be retiring from Formula One at the end of 2022, therefore leaving a seat to be filled at the Aston Martin Formula One team. However, within a day of the Hungarian Grand Prix coming to a close, Vettel's replacement had already been announced. It had been expected that Haas F1 team driver Mick Schumacher would take his mentor's place, with the four-time world champion having suggested to the Aston Martin bosses that his student should take his spot. This made his replacement seem even more bizarre, as the day after Max Verstappen claimed his eighth win of the season, Fernando Alonso announced that he'd signed a multi-year deal with Aston Martin to replace Vettel in 2023. Just a day after Alonso announced he'd be leaving Alpine, the French team revealed who would be replacing the double world champion. Alpine announced that 2021 Formula 2 world champion and reserve driver Oscar Piastri would be promoted. Whilst messages of congratulations were flying in on social media for the young Australian, Piastri made his own unbelievable statement. Piastri announced that he hadn't signed a deal to race for Alpine in 2023 and that he crucially wouldn't be doing so either. It is instead believed that he'd be moving to McLaren F1 team with Piastri's manager, ex-Formula 1 driver Mark Webber, supposedly having struck a deal to see Piastri replace Daniel Ricciardo. Should Ricciardo leave McLaren and remain in Formula 1, then his best hope is to return to Alpine, who are the only side that have a seat to be filled, and could actually afford the Australian salary. As well as Alpine having one seat to be filled, Alfa Romeo, Alfa Tauri, Williams and Haas all have one seat to be taken. Oh, silly season indeed! And Red Bull appeared to be opening the door for Pierre Gasly to pursue other opportunities when his contract expires at the end of the 2023 season. Gasly finds himself bumping his head on a glass ceiling within the Red Bull program. Having worked his way up through the ranks and into the main senior team seat alongside Max Verstappen in 2019, only to be demoted to junior team again after just 12 races. The pathway back to the senior team for Gasly appears to be blocked as they have found a more solid option in the vastly experienced Sergio Perez. Perez, and even if Perez was no longer a Red Bull driver, it would not be a dead certainty that Gasly would have a second bite of the cherry. There is a strong desire in the Formula One community to see Gasly follow in the footsteps of Carlos Sainz and break away from the Red Bull family and go his own way. Judging by comments made by Helmut Marco via the French brand of motorsport.com, people may get their wish at the end of next season. When asked if Red Bull would let Gasly go to pursue other opportunities in Formula One, he replied, Yeah, we have a good relationship. As a team leader, he has been very successful at Alpha Tauri in recent years, but Yuki Tsunoda is already at his level in terms of lap speed. In the race, things are not going as well in previous seasons for the Frenchman. Nevertheless, we improved Gasly's contract financially even though we didn't have to do that. Perez's contract prevents a move for Gasly to Red Bull Racing in 2023. From 2024, Gasly is free. And while Marco acknowledged that Gasly is a better driver now compared to 2019, he still appears to be unconvinced about him being anywhere near Verstappen's standard on a regular basis. Gasly was lapped by Max in Hungary in 2019, Marco recalled. He's certainly more solid, he has a lot of confidence, but to what extent he could hold his own against a Verstappen, it's hard to say. Gasly, meanwhile, has recently said he feels ready to make the step up again away from the Alpha Tauri team, but won't be going anywhere until the end of the 2023 season at the very earliest. Team Haas's Mick Schumacher is also another driver who could be on the move at the end of the season. Former F1 race Racer Hans Joachim Stuck believes Mick Schumacher has now proven himself to be at a level deserving of a better F1 race seat. With only nine races left in the 2022 F1 season, time is running out to confirm the German driver on the grid for next year. The 2020 Formula 2 champion is currently without a confirmed seat for next year, with no indication from Haas that they intend on thrashing out details to keep Schumacher alongside Kevin Magnussen for next year. Schumacher has also explained that there was tension between himself and and team boss Gunter Steiner 
earlier this year due to Schumacher's constant errors and hefty crashes, at a time when the returning Magnussen was bringing home constant points finishes. But Schumacher does appear to have turned his form around in the middle part of the year, earning himself plenty of plaudits. There are precious few opportunities left for Mick Schumacher to find refuge away from Haas. Aside from the currently open Williams seat that Latifi is fighting to hold on to, Alfa Romeo could be a potential opening, and he may not have the support of Ferrari either. Powered by Ferrari, Haas reportedly have a deal with the Scuderia in which they have to field one of Ferrari's juniors. That junior has been Schumacher for the last two years, but newspaper RTL recently reported he is in a fight to hold on to his seat after Haas called a halt to their negotiations with the driver. Gunter Steiner, though, says he has no intention of speaking with his drivers until after the summer break. He also will not wait to see what Ferrari have to say. No, we won't have to wait to see what Ferrari say, the team boss told Racer. We never decide the driver before the summer break, and we will not do so this year. Obviously, I will speak with Gene Haas over the summer break, and then you know how we do it. You will ask again at the next race in Europe, and then we will tell you sometime at the end of September or October what we are doing, and the same will be happening this year, hopefully. However, unlike the last two years where Schumacher could count on Ferrari support, German newspaper Bild claims Ferrari's team boss is no longer enamoured with the 23-year-old. Ferrari boss Mattia Bonotto is not fully convinced by Schumi Jr., claims the German newspaper. Steiner has no idea what Schumacher's deal with Ferrari entails. I don't want to speak about our Ferrari deal because otherwise they get upset, he joked. At the end of the day, I don't know the real deal between Ferrari and Mick, and I don't need to know. If he decides to go somewhere else, I cannot change it. Only Gene and me are involved in that process. And Mick's uncle, Ralph Schumacher, admits there are some Formula 2 drivers, most notably Felipe Drogovic, who could upset Mick Schumacher's plans of re-signing with Haas. Schumacher concedes his nephew, who managed back-to-back -back points hauls at this year's British and Austrian Grand Prix, hasn't made life easy for him. Well, I have to say Mick obviously started very weakly, the Sky German commentator said per motorsporttotal.com. Mick started weakly in relation to Kevin Magnussen. You just have to see it that way. But but, he added, he found his way and at the right time. And in Hungary, with the package, I think he did a decent job. You couldn't expect much more from that either. That's why everything is on schedule. And no matter how, I mean, Haas is a team where you can show yourself for the first time this year. But whether he holds on to that seat remains to be seen, as Schumacher has rivals from Formula 2 vying for the Haas drive, including Formula 2 champion leader Felipe Drogovic. But while conceding that point, his uncle was quick to point out that it is only Drogovic's third season that he is leading the championship. As a rule, August or September is the time when you look around for drivers, the former F1 driver added. I mean, there are also some from Formula 2 who are a bit pressing, of course, and also have money. There, Drogovic is involved. After three or what feels like four years, he has gone ahead. Drogovic comes with backing from XP Investimentos and has been linked to Nicholas Latifi's Williams seat as well as a reserve drive role with Aston Martin. Should Schumacher not continue with Haas, his options are limited to Williams and perhaps Alpine if the latter fails in its bid to force Oscar Piastri to take Fernando Alonso's race seat.